from smartphones to desktops and everything in between, the devices people use to interact with software has never been more diverse. And with that diversity comes additional complexity, not the least of which is figuring out how to design for various screen sizes. To highlight just how complex this can get, here's a sampling of thousands of different screen sizes people use to interact with just one Android service over a six-month period. You may say, well, I can't possibly design for all these screens. I'll just focus on the popular ones. Unfortunately, the same problem remains. So how do we cope? The first step is filling in the gaps with fluid designs. Fluid designs will stretch their interface elements to fill the amount of available screen space or shrink those elements as screen space reduces. Another technique allows us to reveal more of elements on screen as we get more screen space, but then also show less when less space is available. A fluid design like this is a great foundation for making sure we fill in a page. But there's more to adapting to different screen sizes than filling in the gaps. Consider a typical laptop. Of course, what's typical these days is changing, as this device is actually an Ultrabook that allows people to remove the touchscreen and use it however they like. So if we have a fluid design for an application that includes a map, like the example before, when we rotate the device on its side, you can see that we've actually filled in the available space. But that's where the good news ends. As you can see, while our interface has shrunk to fit, we've really minimized the main content area and turned our poor map into a sliver. Our menus also take up excessive space. Frankly, they don't need that much. So how can we adjust? One option is to rearrange the menus into a single column, thereby leaving more room for the map. Unfortunately, this may disorient people as we've now combined two different menus into one. Someone just flipping their device on the side may not be expecting that type of change. Instead, we could not rearrange the menus, but actually take one and slide it off screen while giving people quick access to bring it back. And at this point, we also have more screen space for our map and more of a consistent user interface. But even though this is a step forward, it's still not an ideal situation for this long menu that's frankly taking up too much room. But this menu is important to us. We can't just move it off screen. We actually want to keep it visible while people interact with the map. So as a final step, what we'll do is adjust the orientation of these controls and move them into a horizontal layout instead of a vertical one. Now we've moved one of the menus off screen to make it easily accessible and shifted the orientation and position of the other menu. The end result is more room for the map to shine and an interface that works much better in portrait mode. Hopefully, this simple example gave you a good overview of how to start thinking about adapting an interface to multiple screens. A fluid layout with flexible elements will get you very far, but the points at which the design starts to break are a great opportunity to adjust things to fit screens just right.